This morning I'm going to tell you how to simplify your life. Clutter comes in two main forms, uh, the physical and the mental clutter. And today I'm going to dig into a few simple ways that you can overcome the clutter and improve your life dramatically. First and most obvious type of clutter that we have is physical clutter. Uh, we are surrounded by the stuff that we buy. And again, as I see it, I just got done talking about my tour. As I'm traveling around on my tour, I run into to chiropractors who have just incredibly messy desks, uh, incredibly messy closets of stuff that they've bought and haven't used, um, even messy offices, just accumulation of stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, buying stuff can feel good. Uh, obviously, it's instant gratification. You know, if you're feeling down, then you know buying that you know new piece of sports equipment or, or for the women that you know sleek pair of shoes will undoubtedly make you feel better in the short term. But honestly, it's not doing you any favors. Nine times out of ten, you don't actually need what you're buying. Uh, it's just mindless spending. It's, it's collecting of stuff that you know, and it's just your brain trying to fill some mental void or, or to bury something that you don't want to be feeling or you don't want to be thinking. Uh, and that kind of avoidance. We'll talk about later. I don't want to dig that deep today, but that kind of avoidance is not good for you on any level. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not immune to it either. Uh, I've got a lot better at it over the last few years, but I still, I can see 12 pairs of shoes from where I'm standing, uh, athletic shoes. Um, I haven't bought a new pair of shoes in a couple of years, but I shouldn't say that. I did have to buy a new pair of basketball shoes because my Dwayne Wade's blew out. Uh, so I did have to buy a new pair of, but I have trouble getting rid of them all. Uh, I get rid of a little bit at a time here and there. Uh, if anybody was a fan of my show back in January, I wore a different CrossFit t-shirt every day uh, for like 70 days. Um, I th think at one time I had well over 100 CrossFit t-shirts. Um, and, and again, that was obviously because I was traveling those places, and, and, and but I, I just always felt like I had to have that t-shirt. But that was three or four years ago. I have since decluttered that uh, t-shirt pile I gave away about 70 of them. Uh, I put about 40 of them in storage. And now I, I have 10 CrossFit t-shirts that I have access to at any given time. Uh, so again, not immune to it. I've definitely been through those processes. Uh, but I'm working through it here, which is why I'm trying to help you work through it as well. Uh, so anyways, back to mindless spending. Uh, mindless buying uh, can be a vicious cycle. Uh, it, it drains your savings and it drains your happiness. Uh, and it stops you from doing a lot of things that you should be focused on in order to accomplish your goals. <clears throat> so if you keep buying and storing stuff that you'll probably only use once, and I know that was a question of the day here just uh, about last week, you know, tell me something that you bought and it only used once, and we all have them. Uh, but if, if you continue doing that, then obviously your house just becomes a storage closet for someone else's life. It becomes a storage closet for all the things that people, you know, the marketers uh, got you to buy. Uh, and then you need to spend even more money to buy a bigger house to store all the stuff that you're not even using. So you're building this, this wall of useless spending and even more useless stuff around yourself. Uh, and again, as far as why we might do that and what we're trying to avoid, we can get into later in the season. But uh, that physical clutter can then manifest itself into your subconscious. Uh, you know, slowing you down, giving you a different focus instead of focusing on the things that are going to help you have the success that you want. Now, my tip is not to stop spending. Uh, again, I don't consider myself a full-out minimalist. Um, I, I like you to focus on the things that you do need and the things that you that truly give you happiness. Uh, you know, if you're making good money, spending some of it is part of the fun. Uh, I know my wife and I are, are working on the kids. You know, they earn money for certain things they do throughout the day, and they always want to go spend it. They always want to go buy the toy or buy the candy, uh, and we're always saying, "All right, that's fine. It's your money. You can make choices, but you're better off if you save it this way." Um, you know, save this portion of it and only spend what you, you feel is really necessary. Uh, however, to avoid all that needless accumulation, uh, because that's really where I, where I focus, not so much on being a minimalist, but on reducing the accumulation, we, uh, I'd like you to start to consider using the in then out method. If you bring one thing in, if you go out and buy something uh, and you get something that you truly gives you happiness or you truly need, uh, then you have to pick one thing to go out. Uh, so again, with shoes, I've actually done it. I say I can see 12 pairs of shoes, but I've actually gotten rid of quite a few of them. So if you do buy a new pair of shoes, you need a new pair of shoes, then you have to look through your pile and get rid of one of your old pair of shoes. Uh, now, if they're still good, then obviously don't let them go to waste. Do something good with them. Donate them to somebody who can't afford shoes. I mean, I know there's plenty of programs out there for... Uh, 
people in other countries or even right here in the United States uh, that people are needing shoes. So get rid of them. Donate them. Uh, if they're falling apart, obviously, just throw them out. Uh, it actually feels good. Have you ever just cleaned out a closet uh, and just got rid of a whole bunch of stuff? It actually feels good to do that. It's an extremely simple idea. It's much easier you know, than you might think to put into practice the whole you know, one in than one out. And you'll be amazed at how this simple act of decluttering will, will transform your entire mindset. Uh, it will give you that opportunity to focus on the things that you should be focused on. You'll think about how you use things much more deeply. You'll start to figure out whether or not you actually need the things that you're buying. And you'll put to use the few things that you have. Uh, you know, I say it with the, with, the, with the kids all the time as well. I walk into their, you know, again, they always want a new toy. And I walk into their, uh, I, I can't quite get through to them uh, about how, how we want to declutter. I walk into their toy room, I see all this stuff. I'm like, you don't play with half the toys you have. And again, I know if you're parents, you, you understand that concept. Uh, meanwhile, if you, when we go on a vacation, they always ask, can I bring a couple toys? Yes, bring three toys. And they bring three toys and, and they can spend the entire weekend playing with those three toys. But then they're here at home with a hundred toys and they don't want to play with any of them. Uh, right? There's too much choice. There's too much clutter. Uh, so again, it shows you how just having those few things that you really like and you really need, the thing, three things that you chose uh, will actually make your life better. You'll have more focus uh, on those things and you'll actually enjoy them more. Um, so taking this one in, one out concept uh, will help you find out what you really need and what you really don't need. The second major type of clutter in your life is that mental clutter. Uh, distraction is a quick way towards, uh, I won't say failing at your goals, but, but not attaining your goals. Uh, there are many distractions in life, obviously. And with the internet being what it is, uh, there, there, it seems like there's more and more all the time. Uh, but one major type of distraction that we're having that's getting worse and worse, it really is choice. And some people are under the mistaken assumption that having the widest amount of choice is always the best. Uh, and I guess in some cases that may ring true, but overwhelmingly choice is just a distraction. Uh, it's cluttering up your mind and it's blocking you from getting what's truly important. Uh, you know, I just asked Brennan to write that down there uh, as far as how valuable the, my initial evaluation is. And again, not really to sell that point, uh, but I often say it in coaching. When a client asks me, you know, should I do this, 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 or this? And I say, do that one. That process of removing choice from that person, from saying that's the one you should do, and for them saying, all right, let's get rid of these three options and let's just do that. That process of clearing out that clutter mentally is one of the most valuable things I can do as a coach. One of the most valuable things uh, you can do in giving advice to anybody else as well. Uh, simply because, again, it removes the choice and allows someone to focus on that one thing that, that, that is, I was going to say the most valuable thing for them to do, but I'll give you a little tip in the coaching world. It doesn't matter. If a client says, you know, should I do one, two, or three, and I know as a coach that any of one of them will help that person move along, they've just got to choose one and move, and I pick two, it doesn't matter if one might have even been slightly better. It's the taking action on that choice. It's the removing of distractions so they can focus on that one thing that makes the biggest difference. Uh, now, obviously, if one of them is a terrible choice, we want to get rid of that. But uh, if the one, two, and three are about equal in, in what they'll do for that person, none of them will work if they're distracted by all three of them. Uh, and any of them will work if they just focus on it and go. Um, so again, we're constantly surrounded by choice and we want to try to remove some of those choices so that we can take action on stuff. I mean, think about if you try to go buy a new computer. Uh, you know, Amazon has 2,500 different styles for you to choose from. Uh, I know when I'm looking for airline rates for my tour, uh, you know, you can check a whole bunch of different uh, websites. And my wife's always saying to me, she's like, you know, I'll tell her what the prices of a flight are. And she's like, well, why don't you try somebody, you know, check a different airline or check Priceline. I'm like, I fly United. So for me, it's about removing those choices, removing those distractions. Uh, even if it might cost me an extra 50 bucks, 100 bucks to fly United, uh, it's more valuable to me to focus and go in that direction than it is go check and spend an hour or two checking other websites because uh, my hour or two is worth more than 50 bucks to me. Um, you know, think about dieting, nutrition, exercise, any of that stuff. You know, I'm always looking for new exercise routines. And, and which one do you pick out of you know, 700 uh, diet fads, exercise fads that are out there? Which one do you want to try? The more we get connected as a society, especially through the internet, I think the more choice we have. And unfortunately, that leads to 
what we would call choice paralysis. Uh, I often talk about decision-making fatigue. You have so many choices that it actually wears you out in the course of a day trying to make decisions throughout the day, but there's also obviously also choice paralysis. You have so many choices that it, it, there's too much data hitting us all at once. It blocks our ability to make decisions. And ironically, all that choice causes our brain to make absolutely no choice at all. Go back to the example with my kids with the toys. Again, they have a hundred things, but they have nothing to play with. Uh, if you give them three toys, they love those three toys uh, and they focus on them. So all of that choice uh, makes us make no choice or we become so dependent on outside influences that the choice that we do make is never truly our own. It's not really what we wanted for our life. Uh, it's just what uh, you know got into our, our neurology the best through the advertisements that we're seeing. Uh, and the kicker is both of these scenarios are, tr are completely avoidable. Take a restaurant, for example. Uh, you, know, you ever go a place that has like a novel for a menu, like Cheesecake Factory? Uh, you know, how long do you sit there looking at that menu, reading everything on there uh, and, and studying it before you order? And then you still end up with something you probably end up not liking or you end up wishing you had one of the other three things that you thought about while you were looking at the menu. Uh, but then you go to some of the other restaurants, some of the fancy restaurants that have you know, only 10 things on the menu. Uh, the chance that you pick something you like in those cases goes up dramatically. That's the power of limiting your choices. You have to think more critically about what you want in order to voluntarily limit your choice. You know, if you're thinking about a computer, I mean, you don't want just a computer. You want a computer that can fit in your bag or you want a computer with a large screen or you want a computer that fits the, your needs for it. So that helps to limit your choices before you start looking. But it isn't just about deciding what features you do or don't want. Uh, at a certain point, you just need to impose impose a limit. Now, I'm lucky enough to have staff that, that helps me out a lot with this. So when I'm when I need something from the internet uh, and I don't I don't want to go there because I know it's going to be a distraction to me, uh, I always tell my staff to give me three choices. Uh, so whether it's uh, a, a website that we're putting together, whatever, I'm like give me three choices. If I look at three things, I can make a choice from them. But if I look at a hundred, uh, I just get confused. Um, so same thing goes for whatever else you might be picking that you might need uh, mentally for choices, just limit it to three first and foremost. Uh, so if it's an exercise routine, pick three, stick with those three, choose one of them. If it's computers, pick three uh, to start with, limit your choices and go from there. The actual limit doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're reducing the clutter that's bombarding your brain, that you're simplifying the things around you and then in turn, you're gonna simplify your life. When you start to move away from the clutter, um, almost by definition, you're getting closer to your goals. When you have less clutter, less decisions to make, less choice, and you're only, you, you have more time to focus on the things that you decided were important to you. You know, we've done a lot of goal setting here this season as well, uh, and, and focusing on what that goal is for you as a person, what your decisions are, and then the steps it's gonna take for you to get there. And when you focus on those things, and when you remove all the rest of the clutter, uh, we also talk about morning routines. So when you wake up and, and you're subject to other people's agenda, that takes you away from your goal. But when you wake up and you don't have all of this clutter, you don't have anything else to worry about. The first thing you can focus on is the thing that takes you towards your goal. Uh, your path becomes much more clear. Uh, and before long, you will, you'll marvel at how you lived any other way. You'll marvel at how you lived. Uh, you'll start to think of other people uh, that are normal or <laughs> average. or You'll start to think of them as as hoarders uh, because you've reduced so much clutter. Uh, and trust me, you'll get a lot farther along your path that way. Those are my, my ways of getting rid of both the physical and the uh, mental clutter in your life. Thank you for watching this episode of Coffee with Dr. Scott. I'll talk to you then.